In history, we always had a group of people close to each other. With Diplomacy, we want to give you all these tools to, to be able to interact with these empires, to, to create a bond and a link with them, a kind of an emotional link. You know, you, we want you to have reasons to love or hate these other uh, people and empires, to create uh, these alliances or have to go to war uh, with them. What was really important for diplomacy was the, the stories that players would tell each other. If you look at, uh, say, the, you know, the First World War, what happened, you know, it wasn't a, a direct engagement immediately. There were a lot of people getting roped in, you know, uh, alliances playing off against each other, you know, um, negotiations. So, you know, in, in order to be historically authentic, you know, we needed to add a little bit more, you know, more tools in the player's toolbox, you know, things like bribe or propose. Uh, threaten, demand. The other thing that was very important for us was to make sure that everything was very uh, you know, anchored in a physical space. So we're not talking, of, you know, in, in general terms all the time, we're talking about this specific territory here, you know, don't colonize there, you know, that's mine. We want things to feel, you know, nicely, nicely immediate, you know. We don't want to have sort of a, a round robin vote of everyone uh, deciding what to do, you know, we, we want you to get feedback interactions, make things feel you know, nicely, quick, immediate, impactful. When at peace, you can unlock various forms of cooperation by proposing treaties. The recipients can refuse, accept, or ask for money in return for accepting. You can also propose an alliance. If you are allied, you get the benefits of all the basic treaties and you get to propose more advanced ones as well. If an ally is at war, however, they can call you to join. Refusing will allow them to break their alliance. Your civilization needs resources uh, in order to build uh, units, uh, to build infrastructures, and to boost its economy. You can acquire these resources either aggressively, you know, by claiming territory and uh, exploiting them yourself, or you can buy them from another civilization. When a civilization's choices create a situation that is deemed offensive or otherwise unacceptable by another, a grievance is generated. These grievances can be forfeited to maintain positive relations, or they can be pressed to demand compensation appropriate to the grievance, transferring control of a border territory, paying a sum of money, changing a law or religion, joining a war, and so on. If the demand is refused, it can be used to justify declaring a war or breaking an alliance. Now, of course, you can also declare a surprise war without any justification, but your peers will tend to frown on you if you do so. Once two civilizations have uh, declared war, uh, they'll need to think about their population's support for this war or morale. And this is a value that will uh, tend to decrease over time because people get fed up with uh, fighting a conflict. Um, you can also damage the other side's morale by winning battles against them, by occupying their cities. You know, bombardment and ransacking also has an impact. And finally, if you're able to push the other side's morale down to zero, um, you can force them to surrender. Um, and that is essentially, you know, uh, their population saying, you know, we're so fed up with this war, you know, we're going to make our leader, you know, sign on the dotted line, you know, whatever the, it is that you're uh, imposing on them. In humankind, uh, your empire's choices with regards to events and uh, the civics that you choose uh, will define your empire's ideology. Uh, so, for instance, you know, does my empire patronize the arts, you know, or uh, you know, do we use professional soldiers or mercenaries? You know? So depending on these choices, I'll have an ideology that will be defined, and we can compare the ideology of two different empires to define what we call a proximity. Based on this proximity, uh, it will be more or less difficult to go to war or to sign peace treaties. So, for instance, two civilizations that are very close will have trouble maintaining a war, but it will be a lot easier to sign treaties because the populations feel uh, a certain sort of brotherhood. Whereas if you're very distant ideologically, you will be able to go to war very easily, but it'll be much more hard to sign treaties. In the diplomacy of humankind, the possibilities are endless. Do you want to be a trade empire? Uh, do you want to be friends with everyone and therefore not have to go to war? Do you want to, to, to create a culture that will attract the sympathy of all these other empires? Will you be feared by your neighbors uh, because you, know, you do not uh, react lightly to their provocations uh, through crisis? It's up to you to decide how you will mark history as a leader.